Hey y'all, how's it going? Pretty good? Good. So, it's been a while since I've made a video. And it's been a while since I've uploaded a video. Ironically, I have a bunch of videos on this camera right now to upload. And I was going to upload them, but I'm like, but I have a couple more videos to make. So, I'll make these and then I'll upload them all at once and you'll be like, oh wow. The seasons have shifted so we're coming into mid-fall now um, and here in northeast Oregon down the lower elevations we are starting to get frost um, and that's fantastic because that means it's haw time um, so like rose hips um, and hawthorn anything that's in the rose type family apples things like that I like to gather once they've been hit with frost because um, it really really makes that vitamin C content just spike um, so, speaking of, I went and found some great hawthorn trees. Remember that last video where I met a random hawthorn in the parking lot? Well, I started exploring around that lake and you can kind of go out and up into all these draws. It's a bunch of public land and we probably hiked back about mm, three and a half, maybe four miles and we found a whole grove um, of these thornless hawthorns. It's not very common, but they're just, um, hawthorns really interbreed with each other, but like a hawthorn is a hawthorn is a hawthorn. Um, no matter what species she is, she's medicinal. Um, so I was stoked. This is just like one of like four bags and we barely even made a dent. Um, because you know, don't go stripping these trees entirely because um, they are food sources for your wildlife. Um, but anyhow, so maybe you remember that video, maybe you haven't watched it, but I showed you her berries up close. Um, and you know how they were like really, really bright red? Well, look at how dark red these are now. Um, and some of them, you know, are wrinkly and they get real dark. And that's because she's been getting hit by the cold weather and the frost. And um, that's super fantastic because, again, it means that the tree's like, oh my god! The end is here. <laughs> Let's give our last final push of nutrition to our babies. You know, because then this is a seed. And within this seed, the tree wants this to turn into another tree. So it gives anything and everything to this little haw here, this little hawthorn haw um, of fruit, that it will have its best chance. And so we come in and we gather after frost, that way we can utilize that vitamin C, you know, and all the riboflavin contents. Um, Hawthorne in particular is pretty awesome heart medicine. But today I'm going to show you how to make a delicious heart medicine. So we're going to make some Hawthorne infused honey. You ready for how complicated this is? Get a jar that you can fill mm, maybe a little bit more than halfway up. Hawthorne's, um, should have grabbed a funnel. Hawthorns aren't like excessively juicy, you know? Um, and most of the time when I'm making a honey, and don't worry if there's leaves or nothing in there, that's medicinal too. Uh, most of the time when I'm making a honey, I tell you not to do more than, you know, than half of the jar, maybe a little less because um, that liquid's gonna come out um, and it's gonna cause the honey to water down and then that will like make breeding grounds for fermentation. It's not a bad thing, it's not a scary thing. Um, but with Hawthorne you can add a little bit more because, you know, these berries, like I mashed her completely and you don't see anything dripping out, right? Because there's not a whole lot of moisture in there. They're not like bone dry or anything, but you're not gonna squeeze much juice out of them. Um, so now I'm just gonna take some raw honey and I forgot my jars when I went to um, my honey lady up the mountain, so I had to use these, her plastic thingy she has. Um, and then I'm just going to dump the honey over it. It's really that easy. And of course, I forgot my poker mabob again. I do that with almost every honey video. Basically, you're just putting your fresh um, hawthorn haws in there, hawthorn berries in there, and you're dumping honey over top of it. I'm pretty sure you're smart enough to do that and don't need to pay somebody to teach you to do this. Um, so you're going to want to fill it up all the way to the top for the most part. Pick a jar that you can fill up all the way with um, the berries you've picked for the most part. You know, pick a jar that will contain what you're working with. Don't leave a ton of headspace or anything like that. Um, 
And then basically once that works down in, I'm going to set this in a warm, dark place because I actually want to encourage a little bit of fermentation because what's cool is fermentation creates alcohol and alcohol will extract these berries, alcohol soluble properties. Now it won't be quite the same or the same strength of the tincture, uh, but then a little, pe a little bit of people kind of freak out because they're like, well, how do I stop that fermentation? I don't want my bottles to explode and I don't want your bottle to explode either. Either. So while you're allowing this to ferment, every day or so I want you to walk by and push on the top. You hear that? That means there's no compression in there. That means there's no pressure under that lid. When you go and you push and you can't push, that means it's time to go like this to your lid and it'll go psh. You'll just let off a little bit of air and you'll close it again. And that allows um, the fermentation process to happen without breaking your jar. It's not going to explode on you. It's more likely to crack out the bottom or down the side um, if you forget to do that. Um, but then when you're done and you strain it out, you're like, how do I stop that fermentation process from like continuing even once you've taken the berries out? So there are two things you can do. You can pop this in the fridge. Um, putting it in the fridge will halt pretty much all the fermentation. It's too cold for those little yeasties to thrive. Or you can put it into a double boiler or even just in the oven, just be careful. Um, and you can bring your honey temperature up to about 170 to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. You'll need like a little a meat thermometer or a candy thermometer or something like that to put it in there um, to be checking the temperature. Because when you bring it up to that temp, you're um, killing off the yeast. And that's not a bad thing. They'll still be good beneficial bacteria in there um, but that's how all wine for the most part is halted fermenting other than some people use like chemical tabs but you don't want to do that um, so it, it's really that simple um, and then you can bottle it up and not worry about it exploding on you or your loved ones however um, if you are giving it out you probably want to do the heat method you know because um, if not they might not keep it in their fridge. Basically, when you get to somebody, it's completely out of control of how they treat it. If they sit it somewhere like warm and bright, it might start fermenting again. But all that stuff aside, what the hell is Hawthorne good for? You're like just jabbering on about all this stuff. Oh. So Hawthorne is an amazing heart medicine. Like, I mean, she's very specific to the cardiovascular. I think I said that wrong. You know, the heart muscle, the thing in your chest going boom, boom, boom. <laughs> uh, she's pretty awesome at really lowering blood pressure, uh, um, regulating heart disease. In fact, um, people who take heart medication, a lot of studies have been done to where they can take Hawthorne alongside their heart medication and either outright not need the heart medication or are able to take less. Um, if Hawthorne was being really effective for me, I would take more Hawthorne and less heart medication and see how that, you know, pay attention to that. Um, she's so gentle too. This is an apple. Hawthorne is related to apple. You cannot use an amount of Hawthorne that will hurt you unless you're like allergic to apples. And I mean, yeah, you could probably eat enough apples that you take a real uncomfortable shit. <laughs> but, you know, that's just self-indulgence issues. That's not to do with um, it being poison or toxic or anything like that. Um, a tincture would probably be more effective, but honey is fun because once this is infused and you're all ready to go, you can just take a spoonful and you can add it to some warm water and you can have an instant cup of Hawthorne tea. She's fantastic. She's also like, you know, I don't really sell spirituality a lot, so when I say stuff like this, I really mean it. Um, she's really good for grief, like, like a broken heart, like any type of sorrow. She's just very, very um, nourishing of our hearts. Um, and I know that we feel sorrow in other places and things like that, but it's just, it's amazing heart medicine. When you think Hawthorne, think heart. When you have high blood pressure, think Hawthorne. When you're, when you're heart is fluttering around, you have palpitations, palpitations. When it's jumping around and it scares you, think Hawthorne. If you are at risk for heart disease, think Hawthorne. Um, just think Hawthorne with heart. Look how heart red she is. She's fantastic. Um, so yeah, basically, um, it's just as easy as putting these berries in a jar 
and putting honey over it. Let it sit for about six weeks in a warm place. Pay attention to the fermentation. Make sure that you're burping her off. And then of course, make yourself a label. That way you know um, who's in here and when you started it. Um, so I'm gonna write down Hawthorne. And I'm gonna put raw honey. And I'm gonna mark that it's a honey, and I'm gonna mark the date that it is. I'm gonna pretend like I know what the date is. Oh, uh, okay, it's the fifth. Watch, it's like the third, and it's posting from the future. <laughs> uh, and then I'm gonna write where I got it. Um, okay, now you don't have to. Um, make anything so complicated. You can just use a piece of duct tape, a piece of masking tape, just write on there what it is, what's in it, and when you started it. And then you can even add like when you're supposed to decant it, which is strain it out. Um, and a tip for straining it out is um, warm your jar up a little bit. If it's not like sitting on like a seed heating mat or somewhere where the, the honey is like super flowy, because then when you're straining it, um, when it's warm, it'll strain out just like water. You're gonna wanna use some type of metal mesh strainer over like um, cheesecloth, because the metal mesh, it goes through it, doesn't stick to it, and it's really easily washable um, compared to cheesecloth and honey. Um, so basically, you know, I'm going to let this fill down all the way because I put it on top of um, cold berries because I had these berries in the fridge until I could make this video. Um, well, until I got around to doing it. <laughs> so they've been in there since last night. Um, and then um, I'm just going to fill it the rest of the way up and that's it. I mean, it's really, really that easy, folks. It's just it does not need to be complicated. And you can repeat this process basically with any fre fresh plant matter that you want to. Um, some of them are more liquids, um, so they're gonna be more prone to fermenting. And honey ferments um, when its um, water content gets above like 15 or 25%. I don't remember exactly. I did in other videos, but right now my mind's like, no. Earlier, I had to call the school <laughs> and it was like, oh, and please call me back at 541 and I completely forgot my phone number. <laughs> and it was embarrassing, you know, I've had this phone number for like four years, but I never call myself and I'm not so popular that I give my number out a lot. I don't, I'm not handing this number out to anybody, so I'm like, on a voicemail. I'm like, oh my god, I completely forgot my phone number. I've just been running around like a chicken with my head cut off, so um, anyhow. so. You can do this. You're smart enough. Go out there, find these hawthorn trees. Go find some rose hips. Go out and look for these fall medicines. Check out my other videos where I'm talking about fall medicines. The season is not over yet. There's a lot to be had. Um, so if you like my videos, if you like me forgetting words and trailing off and just being a human with you, um, take a moment to subscribe and click the little bell below um, to turn on notifications. That way you know when I'm posting, you get notified of when I'm posting because I don't always post on a schedule. I No, I never post on a schedule. And then take the time to like and comment. That helps me see that you're here with me. It helps other people find me. It helps me feel like I'm not so alone. And then come interact with me. Come find me on Instagram. Come find me on my website um, and all that kind of stuff you can find um, by following the link in my bio. So thanks for watching me make some Hawthorne honey and I hope you get out there and do this because you are smart enough to do this. Okay. All right. I'll see you next time. Bye.